There is no need to be afraid of problems involving fractions. I'll teach you valuable shortcut methods to bypass some of the redundant steps. Just like the transposition method that I addressed in Lesson 13 video, here in Lesson 14, I'll tell you how to utilize the end result without going through the intermediate steps. Suppose we have a over b over c over d. We already know that this expression is the same as a over b divided by c over d, which is the same as a over b times the reciprocal of c over d, which is d over c. And of course, we can combine them and write it this way. I have these letters color-coded so that you can understand the uh, shortcut method more clearly. Well, I want you to take a very close look at the uh, result here. When you are given a over b over c over d, I want you to go straight to the end result, a d over b c. Well, how do you do that? Very simple. You multiply a and d, which I call outsiders, and it goes in the numerator. We multiply b and c, which I call insiders, and it goes in the denominator. And please memorize this shortcut method, and trust me, it'll come in handy. Now, having that under the belt, let's see how we can make the computation simpler by reducing the fractions even before using the shortcut we just learned. Well, these two expressions are equivalent to each other, so whatever we cancel or reduce in one expression also applies to the other expression. We know that these a and b can be reduced, same here in this expression. And C and D can be reduced here, so we can do the same thing here. Now, what many students don't even know that they can do is the following reduction. Here you already know that A and C can be reduced, so here in this expression we can also reduce A and C. Now let's look at B and D here. We already know that they can be reduced, therefore looking at this expression we can also reduce B and D here. Okay, we have a very important shortcut method now. When we have a division of fractions, we can reduce a numerator on the top with a numerator on the bottom, in this case a and c. And we can reduce a denominator on the top with a denominator on the bottom, in this case b and d. Well, let's practice with some real numbers now. Let's say we have these computations. We know that these two expressions are equivalent to each other and they should produce the same answer after simplification. We can reduce 12 and 10, and 6 and 6, and 5 and 15. Oh, by the way, you can reduce them in different orders as long as you reduce a numerator with a denominator. So we have an end result 3. How about in this division of fractions form? We can reduce 12 and 6, and 2 and 10, and 5 and 15. As we learned from the previous page, multiplication of outsiders, which is 3, goes in the numerator, and the multiplication of insiders, which gives you 1, goes in the denominator, which gives you 3 over 1. So we have the same answer, 3. Now let's look at the equation with fractions on either side or both sides of the equality. You already know the cross-multiplication technique, but here I'll be very quickly reminding you of the background of this technique. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by BD. Well, by multiplying same thing on both sides of the equation, you do not change the equality. Then B and B cancel here, and D and D cancel here, and as a result, we have AD equals BC. Well, this end result is what you get if you cross-multiply like this, thus the name cross-multiplication. Okay, with this simple technique in mind, let's see how we can reduce fractions even before cross-multiplication, which will simplify the computation a lot. Let's say we have a over b equals c over d. We all know that a and b can be reduced, and c and b can be reduced. But not many students, especially in the United States, are not taught that a and c can be reduced, and b and d can be also reduced. So to explain that, let's cross-multiply. Then we have a d equals b c, 
And this way we can uh, clearly see how they are reduced. Because if you can reduce in a certain way in one expression, you must be able to do the same thing in the other equivalent expression. It is very obvious that A and B can be reduced in both expressions and C and D can be reduced in both expressions. Now with this AD equals BC equation, it's clear that A and C can be reduced. But look at this fraction form. Since they are equivalent expressions, we must be able to reduce A and C here. Now with this AD equals BC equation, it's clear that B and D can be reduced. But look at this fraction form. Since they are equivalent expressions, we must be able to reduce B and D here also. So let me summarize the whole thing. When you have fractions in the uh, equation, you can reduce numbers either vertically or horizontally across the equality sign. Let's practice with real numbers. Let's say we have this equation. I'll show you only a couple of ways here, but there are many other ways, and as long as you stick with vertical or horizontal reduction, you're fine. We can cancel 60 and 15, and 240 and 3, and 4 and 80. After cross multiplication, we have x equals 20. Let's do it another way for an exercise. We can cancel 60 and 240, and 15 and 3, and after cross multiplication, we have the same answer, x equals 20. Now you will be able to compute these problems much faster if you utilize these four ways of reducing numbers. By the way, um, after all, uh, if you prefer to use your calculator for the most part of computations, by all means, do it as you feel comfortable. Okay, now you're ready to move on to our main topic, the ratios and the proportions. First of all, let me give you their definitions. Ratios are a comparison of two quantities. Let's say we have three red cars and two yellow cars. And the example for the ratio problem would be something like this. What is the ratio of the uh, number of red cars to the number of yellow cars? Then we say 3 to 2, or using a colon, 3 to 2, or using a fraction, 3 over 2. These three expressions are completely equivalent to each other. For the sake of mathematical computations, however, we use the last expression, which is a fraction form. Now, what is a proportion? It is a statement of equality between two ratios. Let me give you an example. If 3 to 2 is the ratio between the number of red cars and the number of yellow cars, how many red cars do we have if there are 6 yellow cars? In this case, what is not changing is the ratio between two kinds of cars. So the equality will be 3 red cars to 2 yellow cars, or 3 red cars over 2 yellow cars, is equal to x red cars to 6 yellow cars. After we reduce 2 and 6 and cross multiplication, we have x equals 9. So we have 9 yellow cars for this problem. Alright, we're ready to solve problems involving ratios and proportions now. Let's begin. 